Hello everyone, in this video, we are tackling the process of journalizing entries and posting to the ledger or the general ledger, one of the most critical steps in the accounting cycle. Journalizing assumes that you have a deep understanding of the debits and credits. Although I will review briefly the debits and credits in this recording, if you cannot follow, I suggest you stop Go back to the prior recordings and learn your, deb your debits and credits. Journalizing is where everything starts. The financial transaction is first recognized in this process. And all business activities at this point are supposed to be recorded accurately. Total debits will equal total credits here. We will explore how to create journal entries and post to a ledger. And why these are essential steps for maintaining accurate financial record. Journalizing and posting serve as the foundation for all subsequent accounting process, such as preparing trial balance, which we will do next, then preparing financial statements from the trial balance. Make sure you learn how to journalize. Practice as many questions as you can from the homework, from your textbook, through Farhat lectures. You want to learn this process because most accounting is about journalizing this is what we do we journalize we record transaction and journalizing is the official term for recording the transactions let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses we cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by reviewing the debits and credits for the account types. Assets increase on the debit side, expenses increase on the debit side, and dividend increase on the debit side. Liabilities, common stock, and revenues, they increase on the credit side. And remember what I told you, the DEA acronym, Dividend, Expenses, and Asset, DEA, Drug Enforcement Administration or Drug Enforcement Agencies, these account increase on the debit side. That's one thing you need to be familiar with before we proceed any further. Two, this is also a review. The three steps in analyzing transactions. We learn how to analyze transaction. In this recording, we're going to learn how to journalize transactions. When we journalize transaction, we're going to take what we learn in analyzing plus our knowledge of debits and credits. So this is how we're going to journalize. So first, we ask ourselves what happened. Do we understand the nature of the transaction? Two, which accounts are affected? At least two, and we need to classify them. As I mentioned, look for the word cash, pay and receive. And most transactions, especially in financial accounting 101, most transaction goes through cash. So at least we can identify one account. Once you identify one account, the other one is easier to figure out. Then classify them. For example, cash is an asset. What's the other account? Is it an asset? Is it a liability? Is it a revenue, an expense, common stock, dividend? Then determine the directional impact, whether the account went up or it went down, whether both went up, both went down, so on and so forth. So this is, you need to know this up to this point. The next thing we're going to discuss is journalizing a transaction. And what you have in front of you is a sample a journal. This is what a journal would look like. Simply put, you are looking, think of an Excel sheet, but Think this of as an Excel sheet, and those are different cells in an Excel sheet. How would the general journal would look like? The general journal would include a date of the transaction, a column for the date, a column for the account titles and explanation, which accounts are we dealing with, a debit column, and a credit column. 
This is what a general journal would look like. So you could open an Excel sheet, put a date and a column, accounts title explanation, a debit column, credit column, you have a general journal. Now, how do we journalize? Well, well, first we have a date. Every transaction will have a date. For example, the date is December 1st, 20X5. Then for every transaction, at least two accounts are affected. So for, and for the purpose of illustration for this transaction, we have cash and common stock. At least two, we could have more than two. Then we have a debit, a debit amount and a credit amount. For example, here we debited cash 40,000, we credited common stock 40,000. Remember what I said about debits and credits, total debits equal to total credits. Is 40,000 equal to 40,000? Yes, 40,000 debit equal to 40,000 credit. Then we have an account explanation, a transaction explanation, which is what in this situation receive investment by owner. So this is the what we call the transaction explanation. So if somebody looking at this transaction, they could read the statement and say, well, this transaction is about money invested by the owner. We debited cash. It means cash is increased. Remember when we debit cash, cash is an asset. And we credited common stock, common stock increased. What I just did is journalized, or actually it was already journalized. I showed you a completed journal entry, a completed journal entry. And what I want you to notice when we credit, we indent a little to indicate the account is being credited. And this is how you would, how you would read a journal entry. Now, Let's take a look at another completed journal entry for the sake of illustration. Here, what we did is we debited supplies 2,200 and we credited cash. It means supplies went up, cash went down. And the transaction is we purchased supplies for cash. So this is another completed transaction. Another completed means it's already journalized for us. All what we're doing here is we're reading the transaction, the date, what we debited, what we credited, and the amount of the debit, the amount of the credit should equal to each other, and an explanation for the transaction, which is we purchase supplies for cash. Now we're going to move from the, the general journal, from journalizing to examining the ledger, the general ledger. Now we touched upon the ledger in the prior session. The ledger keeps track of each account separately. So to illustrate the concept, we're going to keep track of the general ledger for cash, which is account number 101. Well, here's what's going to happen. The general ledger will have a date column, an explanation column, a PR column, a debit column, credit column, and a balance. In the real world, it could have a little bit more columns or less. It doesn't matter but those are the basic columns. Now let me show you how the general ledger will keep track of each account or, e or each transaction separately. Let's start to complete the general ledger. On December 1st, 20X5, if you remember in the first transaction here that I showed you the journal entry for, what I did is I debited cash and I credited common stock. So notice here what I said is cash went up by 40,000. I debited cash and this is the date. Now here's what's going to happen. I am going to update my cash general ledger. It means what? It means I'm going to go to my general ledger for cash, put the same date, debit the account, debit my cash, increase my cash 40,000 and my balance in my cash now is 40,000. Now I can add an explanation here where you know the investor invested money. That's, that's not bad at all. I can do that. Uh, I can do that. Now, the second transaction, if you remember, I also debited supplies and I reduced cash by 2,200 on December 4th. Let me show you, it's better to see it. Then I increased supplies and I credited cash. Again, what do I have to do? I'm going to have to update my cash. I'm going to credit my cash, put the date. I could, I, could, I, put an ex, I could put an explanation here, purchase supplies for cash, 2,200. I credited cash, 2,200. Now, 
since I credited cash it means cash went down it means I used to have 40,000 the balance now is 37,800 let me spend a minute or two on this general ledger the general ledger is simply a T account in disguise so remember we talked about the T account I debited cash cash went up I credited cash cash went down but the general ledger especially computerized general ledger they keep a tracking balance of things now you might have to keep a tracking balance if you have a T account and we're gonna see how later now I only updated my cash general ledger for this transaction I also have a general ledger for common stock and I will need to update this I also have a general ledger for supplies and I will need to update this I only showed you the cash just for the sake of illustration but each account has its own general ledger and it gets updated now having said so now we need to talk about the we, we, we discuss the debits we discuss the credit what's a PR PR is post reference and what I'm saying here is the PR is G1 what does that mean it means this information coming from a general journal page one so this is page one and this is the also the prior transaction is general uh, general journal page one so that's all what the post reference is the post reference is telling me that I am inputting this information going to general ge general journal page one this is what the PR is post reference where is this information coming from notice here I'm gonna reveal more then I paid cash of 26,000 my cash went down to 11,800 then I somehow I received cash 4,500 my cash went up to 16,300 so notice the general ledger keeps track of changes in my cash account keeps track of changes in my cash account and we're gonna see this shortly but this is the purpose of the general ledger now when I'm going over the transactions you're gonna only see the T account because the T account is the general ledger so keep in mind that imagine that you are working in a general ledger and keeping track of each balance separately now when we analyze the transaction you're, we're gonna keep track of each account separately so you will see how each account is kept track of separately through its own general ledger or its own T account let's go ahead and start to process transactions let's start with the first transaction the good news about these transaction is you saw them in prior recordings where we analyze them so let's start with the first transaction Adam Farhat invested $40,000 cash to start a corporation named Farhat lectures again what happened well Adam decided to start a business called Farhat lectures and invested $40,000 cash we learned when we analyze transaction that cash should go up and common stock should go up and we know that cash is an asset and common stock is equity now we're gonna translate this information into a journal entry the journal entry would look something like this there's a debit and there's a credit remember cash is debited cash is gonna go up because cash is debited therefore we put the date of the transaction cash is the debit account and debited cash 40,000 and the credit is to common stock common stock went up common stock goes up by 40,000 now what is this PR and what's this 101 and what is the 307 101 is the general ledger for cash the general ledger for cash is 101 notice here it's 101 this indicates that we updated the general ledger for cash and the 307 is the account number four common stock indicating that we updated the general uh, the general ledger for common stock so this is basically how we did what identify the transaction analyze it which accounts are affected recorded it then we post post means we update the general ledger for each account separately so this is transaction one now when we go to transaction two we will keep track of the cash account we will keep track of the common stock because this is a continue continuation so when we look at transaction two you're gonna see that we're gonna carry the 
cash account and we're gonna carry the common stock although the common stock is not affected in transaction two nevertheless think about that common stock is kept track of separately let's look at transaction two transaction two here's what happened Farhat lectures purchase supplies paying 2400 cash well what happened is the company needed supplies Farhat lecture needed supplies so they purchased the supplies paying cash well what happened is this we learned that cash went down supplies went up they're both assets well let's take a look at it from a journal entry perspective supplies went up it's a debit cash went down it's a credit again this is the account for supplies and this is the account for cash so we debited supplies we credited cash and by the way I failed to mention something I should have mentioned earlier I'm gonna mention it now the account that's being debited is listed first so would I list cash first or would I list supplies first the account that's being debited is listed first then when we credit we indent a little and this is what we did here the account that's being debited first and when we credit we indent a little common stock should have been indented a little now let's post to the cash account let's post to the supplies the supplies is number 126 the supplies is debited 2200 so if I ask you what is the balance in supplies you would say 2200 now cash cash is credited cash is credited 2200 if I ask you now what is the balance in cash here's how you compute the balance you'll take the difference between the debits and the credits you'll take the difference between the debits and the credits and if we look at the difference it means what it means take 40,000 and deduct from 40,000 2,200 and the balance is 37,800 you put the balance under the debit because cash will increase on the debit and will have a normal balance of debit so notice this is the balance 37,800 let me show you where you saw this balance before too so I just want to kind of connect everything remember when we looked at the general ledger at a computerized or advanced general ledger this is what it looked like cash was debited 40,000 cash was credited 2200 and this is the running balance 37,800 so you're seeing the same thing except that in a T account format so I want you to keep this in mind let's take a look at transaction 3 Farhat lectures purchase equipment for $26,000 cash from IBM so Farhat lectures needed additional equipment purchase the equipment paying cash cash will go down equipment will go up they're both assets which account is listed first you know it equipment it's being debited it's going up then cash is being credited goes next as a credit so we debit cash this is December 6 26,000 debit equipment sorry 26,000 credit cash let's post to the equipment account let's post to the cash account we post to the equipment account 26,000 account number 167 and we credit cash 26,000 once again now if I ask you what's the balance in cash now I'm gonna deduct 26,000 from the prior balance and my balance in cash is 11,800 what's my balance in equipment the balance in equipment 26 notice I draw a line to compute the balance let's look at transaction 4 for hat lectures purchase additional supplies of 5100 on credit now we purchase more supplies but it happened that we purchased these supplies on credit it means we did not pay for it let's analyze the transaction we increased our supplies by 5100 and we did not pay cash cash would have went down if we paid cash we increase our accounts payable the first liability by 5100 now the transaction will be a debit to supplies 5100 which is going up and a credit to accounts payable accounts payable going up as well we credit liabilities to increase them remember liabilities accounts payable as a liability it increases on the credit side let's let's post to both the supplies account and to the accounts payable we already purchased 2200 worth of supplies with cash now we purchased an additional 5100 if I ask you what is the balance in supplies the balance in supplies is 7300 
and accounts payable what's the balance 5100 accounts payable will have a credit balance supplies will have a debit balance let's take a look at this transaction Farhat Lectures provided consulting services to a customer and received cash right away 4500 well Let's analyze the transaction, starting with cash. Cash is easy. I received cash. Cash will go up. Why did I receive this cash? The reason I received this cash is because I provided a service. And the good thing about the service, I provided the service, and the customer was so nice that they paid me immediately, right? So they paid me immediately, and I provided a service. Therefore, revenue would go up 4500 Revenue would go up and cash will go up. Now, from a journal entry perspective, what's going to happen is this. Cash is debited, 4500 Consulting revenue is a revenue. Revenue goes up on the credit side. As I told you, revenue always go up. As I mentioned when we learned about the revenues and the expenses, revenues always go up, expenses always go up, revenue go up on the credit side. From a T-account perspective, I'm going to debit my cash, 4500 and I'm going to credit my revenue. Remember, revenues don't decrease. Revenue always go up, 4500 And now I can run the my balance for cash again, which is if I take the 40000 minus... The 4,000, uh, 40,000 minus the 2,200 minus the 26 minus the 4,500 plus, plus the 4,500 because I increased my cash 4,500. 4, my new balance is 16,300. That's my balance in cash. What's my balance in revenue? 4,500. Now, I'm, I'm not going to keep track of my cash balance, but you guys get the point. Let's take a look at transaction six. Farhat Lectures paid 1,200 rent. Well, if I paid rent, it means I paid cash. My cash goes down and my rent expense goes up. Expenses always go up. However, they reduce equity. So expenses always, they get a debit. I'm going to debit rent expense, increase rent expense, and credit my cash 1200 so from a journal entry perspective i uh, from a journal entry perspective we are done let's post to rent expense 1200 the account number is 640 cash is credited 1200 therefore i reduce my balance by 1200 therefore my new balance in cash is 15100 a debit balance and you're going to see why i keep i keep repeating cash as a debit balance rent expense is a debit balance you will see why later Transaction seven, Farhat Lectures paid salaries of 500. Another expense, just similar to the prior entry. My cash will go down, my expense will go up, but I reduce my equity. Rent exp sa uh, salaries expense, debited 500, cash is credited 500. I update my salaries general ledger and I reduce my cash by 500. My new cash balance is 14,600. Let's take a look at this transaction. Farhat Lectures provided consulting service revenue of 1,800 and rented facilities for 200 to LB Engineering on credit. We provided the service, a total of 2,000, of which some of it is consulting revenue, some of it is rental revenue. The customer did not pay. My account receivable will go up by 2,000. Account receivable is an asset. I am going to debit. List first the debit. I'm going to debit account receivable 2000 Now, I credit next. I credit revenues. I have two revenues. I have consulting revenues, 1800 and rent revenue, 200 Then I post to each account separately. Account receivable is 106 I'm going to post 2000 to account receivable. I'm going to credit consulting revenue 1,800. Now remember, consulting revenue used to have only 4,500. I am I am adding more revenue now. This is the total. And rental revenue, I only have 200 of rental revenue. This is called a compound entry. Why it's called a compound entry? Because it includes three accounts, more than two. Nevertheless, total debits 2,000 equal to total credits 2,000. This does not change now 
I received cash on account. What does that mean? It means the person that the person that I provided the service to paid me the balance. What's the balance? The balance is, if you remember, the balance was two thousand. Well, what am I going to do when I receive the two thousand? I am going to increase my cash by how much? You guessed it, two thousand dollar, and I am going to reduce my accounts receivable. I already provided the service. I already recognized the revenue. What's happening now is my account receivable going down. Therefore, what I would do is this. I am going to debit my cash first and credit my receivable. Now, let me show you what's going to happen to the cash. The cash will have an additional $2,000. let us let me show you the receivable. I used to have a $2,000 in receivable debit I credited receivable 2000 now my balance is zero my balance is zero is a debit balance because accounts receivable is an asset let's take a look at this transaction transaction 10 made a partial payment to a supplier well I made a payment of a thousand dollar to my to the supplies I purchased in transaction 4 now if you go back to transaction 4 you you will see that I made a we purchased stuff on account well if I made a payment my cash is gonna go down and my accounts payable is gonna go down because I am paying off my liabilities so I'm gonna debit my liabilities because I'm reducing my liabilities and I'm gonna credit my cash because my cash is going down now prior to this transaction my balance was 5100 in my liabilities after I made the payment, I reduced my balance by a thousand. So if I ask you, what is the balance in accounts payable? It's 4,100. Now, what's my balance in cash? I add all the debits, subtract all the credits, and the balance will be a debit. Let's take a look at this transaction. Paid cash dividend to owner. So Adam withdrew $500 for personal use. Remember, Adam started this company. Now, Adam needs some money to live off. That's, that's what they want to do. They want to live off some money. So what they did, they took out $500 for personal use. That's fine. Cash is going to go down by $500. Cash is an asset. And what's going to happen is dividend will go up. Hold on a second. But there's a minus next to dividend. Dividend will always go up. The minus is to indicate dividend is reducing equity. Therefore, I'm going to debit dividend. Remember, dividend is part of the DEA, dividend. Dividend always go up, and I paid cash. Cash goes down. Cash takes a credit. So dividend goes up. Cash go down by 500. If I want to run a balance, I add all my debits minus my credits, and I will find my balance. My balance and dividend is 500. Now I am I'm going to introduce a new transaction that you did not see up to this point. So up to this point, the 11 transactions that we processed were already processed in the prior recording. We analyzed them. Now we recorded them in a the form of a journal entry. Now I am going to be introducing a new entry. Farhat Lectures received $2,250 in cash from a customer for consulting services to be performed next year. So let's analyze the transaction. Did we receive cash? Yes, cash went up. For what purpose? Well, the customer wanted us to provide a service for them, but that service to be performed next year. It means what? It means we did not perform the work. It means what? It means this is unearned consulting revenue. This is a liability. Therefore, I increase my liabilities. And this account, I am planting the seed for the adjustments. So remember, unearned revenue would eventually becomes revenue. I'm planting the seed now. The debits and the credits are easy. I received cash. Cash goes up. It's, a, it's an asset. Unearned revenue is a liability. Liabilities goes up by a credit. So let's post. I'm going to add 2250 to my cash. And I am going to have in my unearned revenue, which is a liability, number account number 236, 2250 Now, eventually, this account, unearned revenue, will be it adjusted. This is what I'm trying to plan the seat for, for the next, next topic, the adjustments. Transaction 13, another new transaction I am introducing you to. Farhat Lectures paid 
600 cash for a 36-month insurance policy with coverage starting December 1st. I purchased insurance policy for three years. This is a prepayment. My cash went down. I paid for that policy. My prepaid insurance, which is a prepaid account, which is an asset, went up. So I'm going to debit prepaid because the prepaid is going up as an asset and I'm going to credit my cash. Cash is going down. Cash is an asset. Let me post. Prepaid goes up. Cash went down and I have my balance in cash. Now, again, this prepaid eventually will start to decrease month after month. Now, what's the rate? Well, if I pay the policy for 3600 over 36 months, that's easy. Every month that goes by, I'm going to reduce this account by 100. And we'll see that later. I'm planting the seed for the adjustments. Let's take a look at this transaction. Paid utilities expense in cash. Well, Farhat Lectures paid $218 cash for the utilities expense for the month of December. My cash goes down. This is an expense entry. Expenses go up to 18. I'm going to debit expenses. They always get a debit to increase them. And I'm going to credit cash since cash is going down. Again, this is an expense transaction. We should be pretty familiar with this. And I reduce my cash by 218 Whatever my balance is, now I'm going to look up all the balances, actually. I'm done. There are 14 transactions, and this is a summary of all the transactions, starting with cash. This is all the debits, all the credits, and my balance in cash is 13532 My balance in account receivable is zero. My balance in supplies, 4300 My balance in the prepaid, 3600 My balance in the equipment, 26000 Total asset 50,432. My balance in my accounts payable 4,100. Credit balance. My balance in my unearned revenue 2,250. Credit balance. My balance in common stock a credit balance of 40,000. My balance in dividend is 50,000. My balance in consulting revenue is 6,300. It's a credit balance. My balance in, in rental revenue is 200 credit balance. My balance in salaries expense 500 debit balance. My balance in rent expense is 1,200 debit balance. My balance in utilities expense 218 debit balance. Now, those accounts I'm going to be telling you right now, and we're going to see this later, those are income statement account, revenues and expenses. The next thing we're going to learn about is something called the trial balance the trial balance before we examine the trial balance let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com sandy's office depot received a 600 dollars payment on a client's account receivable the remaining balance is 400. the journal entry to record this transaction would include what so sandy's receive a 600 dollars payment on a client's account receivable Let's start with the easy part. I with the company received cash of 600. So we need to know which of the, let's start with the cash. Uh, if I received $600 cash, do I debit or do I credit cash? I'm going to debit cash because my cash is going up. A, debit account receivable, credit cash, out. A is out because I'm crediting cash. Look at it from a cash perspective. Debit cash, 600 Credit account receivable, 600 Well, does this sound right? I think this sounds right. Let's hold on this one. Debit cash, 400 No. The remaining balance is 400 The remaining balance is 400 So from a T account perspective, in my account receivable, I had $1,000. I received a payment of 600 This is the payment. I credit account receivable. The remaining balance is 400 this is the balance, not the debit. This is the balance. Debit account receivable 400 and credit cash. I am not crediting cash. I am debiting cash 600. So the entry is cash up 600. Account receivable credit down 600. This is the entry. The customer owed us 1,000, the remaining is 400. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures. Look at additional resources, lectures, multiple choice. That's going to help you understand this important topic, journalizing, accounting, 
posting to the ledger. Those are the basics of accounting. If you don't know how to journalize, forget about accounting. For, forget about your financial accounting course. You will not be able to survive in your financial accounting course if you are not 100% comfortable with, you guessed it, you guessed